Welcome everybody to Hub City Homestead. We hope you had a wonderful, wonderful Easter weekend. Uh, ours was lovely, busy, crazy, fun, and uh, my uh, my in my social introvert is exhausted. <laughs> so, um, but it was good. We had my parents most of the weekend. We had two birthdays. We had. Uh, like I said, Easter, General Conference, all these fun things that we do did over this past weekend, and it was it was a lot. So I hope yours was as wonderful as ours. I know that things the weather's been crazy everywhere. It's been warm, and then it gets cold, and then warm. I mean, I guess it's just spring, so that's what happens. And but we're gonna get going on projects. To uh, on this video, we're gonna be planting strawberries. I've got a little a real sh little not too bad of a woulda shoulda coulda but um you know it is what it is homesteading is what it is so we're glad you're here <laughs> well i hope all of you had a wonderful holiday weekend i know i did easter's one of my favorites um i love uh I love remembering my savior and I love spending time with family. And this year uh, it was also uh, the general conference of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. And so we got to watch that and that was awesome. Uh, my parents were in town, my brother was in town. It was just wonderful and my daughter had her birthday. And today, it's another beautiful day. Another beautiful spring day, and we are going to plant strawberries. And I think we're going to try and get some peas in. And get our peas in. And tomorrow is Marin's birthday. So, she be seven. Okay, hang on. We got to do another hole, huh? Actually, come over here on this side. So we've got our hole dug. I gotta plant this one. Yeah, that's fine. Come over here. Come up. Yeah, come put some water in. We're gonna put some water in the hole. I'm just using Miracle Grow potting soil because it's what I've got. Okay, then we're gonna make these roots kind of spread out. Okay, make them kind of spread out there, and then I will hold it while you push the dirt in, and I'll tell you when to stop. Okay. Get dirt all the way around it. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Yeah, there we go. And we just get that in so it's just right at the top of the nodule part, but just under these little stalks. Hey, Kaylee, we. Oh. So what we're growing is an everbearing strawberry, an Ozark Beauty. Here's the scientific name down here at the bottom. On here it says sh they should be spread 18 inches. Eh, we might be close because that's 18 inches on center so they need like 9 inches between plants. And I'm not doing a big patch. Eventually uh, I hope to have a a nice patch for strawberries that we can let them spread out a bit. So, okay, there's our strawberry garden. Uh, this, so, I don't want to be a downer, but homesteading has downsides. Uh, there's a lot of upsides. There's a lot of good things that happen. You know, interacting with your animals and and being able to provide your own food and things like that are wonderful. But there's a lot of death too, and there's a lot of shoulda, woulda, couldas. 
Uh, so this is another shoulda, woulda, coulda kind of video. But, you know, the thing is, is this is a shoulda, woulda, coulda that was not something that I maybe could have avoided or that I was, that I would have recognized as being avoidable. Um, I just got so excited to do broilers and to be able to uh, grow some broilers and then sell the broilers and have my own meat and just didn't really think about temperature. Uh, I really wasn't, I, I'm, I really don't have a really good area for uh, raising the chickens, I guess. Like I'm okay with the chicks, but when it, they get bigger, I'm running out of space. So I've got some things that I need to fix there. Um, we started with 80 broilers. We are now down to 39, I believe. And I know there's at least one more that I think is going to pass away today because it's, it's just not looking good. And uh, possibly another one that wasn't looking too good. So it's one of those things where it's like, oh. You know, it's like $147 and half of that is dead. So, but when you're getting into homesteading for the first time, when you're trying things for the first time, sometimes this is what happens. And you have to be prepared for that. Be prepared for a little bit of loss in either uh, loss in, in produce, uh, product, uh, animals, um, money, and uh, and just be prepared for those things. Recognize that those things happen because none of us wants to lose money. None of us wants to have a bad experience with our our homesteading. And and right now I'm I'm stressed a little bit. I'm a little disappointed that we've lost so many birds. Um, I'm I'm stressed because things are warming up. I want to get my garden stuff going, and I've got these other projects that we need to get done that we've been planning for years but for some reason I just wanted to jump ahead and, and do everything all at once so we're, we're just we're working on those things we're just working on it um, I'm still gonna get some gardening stuff in it's cold at night so I've got to figure out my I bought some agricultural um, fleece to put on or in my greenhouses to help keep my plants from freezing. Uh, we were in the 20s last night. I looked at my plants this morning. They had frost on them. I think broccoli is okay with that a little bit because it wasn't a horrible, horrible frost, but it was still frosty. I know kale does fine with it, and I hope that my little seedlings are established. I'm more concerned about my lettuce. Um, my dill may die. I, I'm not super concerned about the dill. Dill grows really well. I can, I can do that in a pot later in the year. Um, so it's just, I'm just learning. I'm growing. I watch all the homestead videos on everybody else's channels and, and, uh, they all live in North Carolina. So it's like, <laughs> I have to remember I'm in Utah, so I have to learn how it works in Utah because we are low water, we are colder, and we're up in the mountains, and so it's all a learning curve, it's all stuff that we're trying to do. Um, I probably should have uh, waited to get my first batch of broilers further into April, uh, and then I could have probably lost fewer of them, and then I would have more that we're going to be harvesting. Uh, in some ways, we're actually not that disappointed in uh, the, the amount that we'll be harvesting just because uh, it is our first time doing a bigger harvest. But it, it'll all work out. I've got another set coming at the end of April, another set in, uh, let's see, I think the first part of June. Uh, I have another set that's supposed to be coming the end of July, I think. Anyway, I have four rounds. I think I am going to cancel one of those rounds, uh, mostly because I'm concerned about the heat. Uh, the heat in July and August is really intense here, and so I'm thinking I might uh, take those ones, cancel that one, maybe move it to the next year, or buy something else. Uh, and do an exchange with 
uh, Meyer Hatchery. So we'll we'll keep you posted on that. Um, you know, something I think I'm going to work on here. I've got seven weeks to put together a second uh, broiler shelter, and I. I believe what I'm going to do this next time around is build a broiler shelter, second broiler shelter, and split the chicks in half when I move them out of the brooder, uh, which is currently one of our chicken coops. <laughs> uh, we'll, we'll split them in half so that half of them stay there underneath the, the chicken coop and half of them go into the new broiler shelter so that they all have more space. Because I'm looking at the 35 chickens we have now and it's it's tight for them and so I'm I'm recognizing that I really don't have enough space for them in the one uh, run so anyway all these things I'm learning uh, I did happen to find uh, bottles jars for canning at my local hardware store so keep your eye out if you're looking for those they're starting to to come into the stores again lids aren't there yet but most of the jars come with lids to start with so um, if you're working with your older jars, you're just going to have to keep an eye out for, for new lids. And uh, let's all keep our fingers crossed so that we can all get the gardens in and, and do some, some great things in, on our homesteads this year. I wish you all the best of luck, and I hope you'll wish me luck and, and give me a, a prayer and, <laughs> and send good vibes my way, and, and we'll uh, see how things go. We will... See you on the next video. Bye-bye.